like evil in your sight. Our conscience condemns us. Our sin cannot be denied. Grant, therefore, we beseech you that we may not seek to hide ourselves from you, but rather make a sincere confession of our sins. And according to your promise, forgive us our trespasses and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For the sake of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, our only Savior, A lesson from the Gospel of John, beginning at verse 19. Please stand as we read the Gospel. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Mercy and peace are yours through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll focus on the words from St. John chapter 20, which were read previously. You may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, if you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Imagine the disciples on the night that they heard those words. Scared, maybe a little afraid because they had seen what their Savior had been through and now they saw him alive and soon they would see him go. And Jesus called on them to be his law and gospel proclaimers. But if I'm sitting in their shoes, I'm wondering, will my words be valid? Will my words actually hold as much weight as the words we heard come from the mouth of our Savior? And then Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. What a comfort and a joy it is from the mouth of Jesus. Clearer words could not have been spoken. Now Jesus calls on a new generation of law and gospel proclaimers, and yet he gives to us that same promise. I'm not in the business of questioning God's decision-making, but I would assume that I'm not the only one in this room that wonders whether God is giving me more credit than I deserve. To be proclaiming something as great as the forgiveness of sins as powerful to open the doors of heaven, to unbind consciences, to free the guilty sinner. Perhaps God is giving me more credit than I deserve to hold in my hand such a jewel. Especially when the one confessing their sins to me is guilty of the exact same sin that I have been guilty of. God, maybe you're giving me more credit than I deserve. Maybe I should not be the one in this position granting this forgiveness. And yet God in his mercy entrusts sinful human beings, mere jars of clay, to proclaim his forgiveness. So that when we are assured of the forgiveness of sins, it's not just a bubbling in our tummy. It's not just a feeling. It's not just a, a concocted dream. It is sure and certain from the mouth of a flesh and blood human being. But you know that all too well the, the joy of forgiveness is not just in announcing it but thank God in receiving it. Martin Luther talked about this joy that was stripped away from so many in his day in his brief exhortation to go to confession. Luther explains what the situation was like. He said, as we all know from experience, there had been no rules so burdensome as the one that forced everyone to go to confession on pain of committing the most serious of mortal sins. That law also placed on consciences the heavy burden and torture of having to enumerate all kinds of sin so that no one was ever able to confess perfectly enough. The worst was that no one taught or even knew what confession might be or what help and comfort it could give. Instead, it was turned into sheer terror and a hellish torture that one had to go through even if one detested confession more than anything. Think of it. The burden of receiving forgiveness? Satan had so marked his territory that those who would come to confession would receive some concocted, made-up forgiveness, which was no forgiveness at all, but a work of man. Brothers and sisters, 
What joy was robbed from them? But that is ours. What comfort was torn away from them that we have? What freedom? So many of them were bound, and yet we receive the forgiveness freely. How does a Christian congregation use the keys? Luther asked. A Christian congregation with its called servant of Christ uses the keys in accordance with Christ's command by forgiving those who repent of their sin and are willing to amend and by excluding from the congregation those who are plainly impenitent that they may repent. I believe that when this is done, it is as valid and certain in heaven also as if Christ our dear Lord dealt with us himself. What a blessing. What a comfort this is for us. You and I are assured of forgiveness. We receive forgiveness, not through works, not through saying enough prayers, not through putting enough beads through our fingers. No, we receive the forgiveness from a flesh and blood human being. And the comfort that is ours does not come from the human being himself, but in the gospel that he proclaims. Luther wrote a small book for Luther, about 80 or 90 pages, on the keys. This is what Luther had to say in just one section of that book from 1530. Consequently, there must lie hidden in the keys of Christ his blood, death, and resurrection, by which he has opened to us heaven, and thus imparts through the keys to poor sinners what he has wrought through his blood, The office of the keys is a high and divine office, aiding our souls to pass from sin and death to grace and life. It grants righteousness without any merit or of works, solely through forgiveness of sins. Friends, take comfort in the ministry of the keys. Take comfort in what is yours, the forgiveness of sins so freely given. And yes, there might be times when you are called upon. In those moments, dear friends, seize the opportunity to forgive as a Christian brother, a Christian sister, a Christian neighbor, a Christian parent, a Christian child, a Christian husband, a Christian wife. What a joy and privilege it is to receive and to announce the forgiveness of sins. Luther concluded his book in 1530 with a blessing. And I would like to conclude now with that same blessing. May the Father of all wisdom and consolation so help us through the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be praise and thanks in all eternity. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us kneel and make confession of our sins.
believe on Jesus Christ and sincerely and perfectly for us by the assistance of God the Holy Ghost, henceforth to a man of such a life, and declare so by saying, Yes, yes. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Lord, announce the grace of God to you, and in its stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love. 